this is a wonderful opportunity for me to be here with you today, and I'd like to thank everybody who's here, because I think that together there were some questions earlier on how, and there are no small gestures. I think that everyone, at each one of our respective levels, we can have an impact, and it's together that we can change culture. So quickly, to get to the heart of the matter, I've been asked to present to you how we implement, how we implemented our Partners in Care program at our hospital. What did it give us? What benefits does it bring? And what are the winning conditions? And often what I say to the patients with whom I work is that you'll see in five years we will have made a big difference. And for that, we need to be proud of the work that we're doing today despite the fact that it's nothing is perfect. So what was the trigger? What triggered this at our hospital? Well, our involvement with the University of Montréal at the time they gave us the opportunity to work with them on a project that was called Participation in the Partners in Care Program, which was uh, looking in an individualized way at uh, improving processes for continuous improvement for by establishing objectives together and by working together on the results that we wanted to achieve. So obviously this was a trigger for us because it allowed us, yes, to be better equipped as clinicians and organization, but it also allowed us to see how we could identify the resource patients who could work with us, and this allowed us as well to define key roles that are very important in this program. Another element as well in the how is a structure. We talked about this a lot today. The support of management is more than essential so that all of the teams have to understand that the project is important. Yes, it's a call to change, and we are supporting them in their strategies and actions. We also created a continuous improvement committee, which brought together all of the people who were involved. And that's very important, because there were a few teams. There were four teams initially who were involved in this Partners in Care program. And this allowed us to bring together the people who had experience, because you'll understand that continuous improvement and all the people involved in this were not all at the same level. So we brought all their experience together so that we could adjust on the fly. What I didn't mention, because I don't want to get into too much detail, but there are really some key moments. And there's also a leader in collaboration in the institution that's introduced in this program. So these are people who have roles and duties that are very, very important. The other projects, I'm not going to mention them, collateral effects of involvement. As soon as we get involved in a project that includes a patient, where we hear their comments, the level of satisfaction of the teams is very high. So it's obvious that when it comes to collateral advantages, we can't leave those aside. Because yes, we're talking about this uh, Partners in Care program, but there's all sorts of other initiatives that came from this program and which are ongoing in our establishment. We can talk about training for the interdisciplinary uh, intervention plan. So we're introducing that at the uh, Maison of Rosemont Hospital. There's several research projects that we're participating in as well. And one element that for us is an important lever is that patients, the resource patients who are involved, they too are trainers at the university. So this allows us to always be connected to see what's going on, and it always brings us back to the bases. How? So there were five uh, continuous improvement teams. Three are currently still active. So breast cancer, colorectal surgery, and pain clinic. The team that is the most mature, I would say, in this experience is the breast cancer team. And what we have to know here is that earlier we talked about attitudes. And I would tell you that, yes, perhaps there's attitude but we also have to develop the team's skills and to develop the patient's skills, the patients who are involved in these committees. And it was very rich. It was a very enriching experience, and it allowed us to adapt to the reality of patients. Now, when it comes to this breast cancer team, what they chose was really to improve the knowledge and the information that we give to patients so that they can make better decisions, more informed decisions. So we've been talking about this for years. What's particular with this breast cancer team? Well, the themes were chosen with the patients, so it really came from their needs. The objectives were also chosen with the patients, and there's even content 
in these workshops that was developed by the patients. And the workshops are presented in co-animation. So there's a clinician and a patient, mm -hmm. which makes all the difference. Now, the rate of satisfaction, it's quite astonishing. The people who get involved are very satisfied with their experience and of the culture change. We're talking about a culture, so it takes time to bring about change. And to change a culture, we also need initiatives that allow us to understand what does it concretely mean in the field. We've also got with these workshops, and this is quite powerful, by measuring the rate of satisfaction following the workshops, we also ask people to see if they've got an interest in collaborating as patient partners. And I would tell you, that it's pretty surprising. There are many participants in the room who are interested in getting involved so as to improve the service offering. And the patients who get involved are not there because they're not satisfied with the care they're getting. They're very satisfied. Well, anyways, that's what I've heard. They're very satisfied with the experience, but they're conscious of the fact that there are things that need to be improved and they want to be part of this improvement. And what's being created now, they're working on a network. For breast cancer, there was a workshop on pre-surgery, which happened quite quickly. This uh, idea was brought up in June. It's already in place. Uh, patients have already been integrated. So this is something that was done very quickly. And we were able to easily rec recruit patients during our first workshops. So what are the results? There are a lot of obstacles and barriers, different points of view. And by involving patients, we can see all these different points of view. It's a concrete way of seeing that partnership. You know, people tell me, Sylvie, listen, I read the concepts, but the, the nicest comment I heard from a manager was, Sylvie, now I understand what partnership means. And you'll see later, one of the challenges that we've got is that we got volunteer teams, and now we have to have a critical mass. But even the people who were convinced, who got involved, concretely change their one-on-one -on -one practice. We're talking about people who are convinced, so this had a major effect. Now, a process. Um, so before each continuous improvement committee, we take 15 minutes before and after. We take a few minutes to adjust to what we're seeing. Now measuring or an evaluation, obviously that's continual. What we're doing now is that we determine together a common objective and then we determine which indicators. We're looking more at processes now, but we have to keep working on this, on the evaluation. On the organizational side, I've talked about this. So what I could add is leadership. We talked about this earlier. The more the doctor is involved, more uh, the management will be uh, convinced as well, and the higher the beneficial effects. So we don't have to leave that aside. And when it comes to coaching, the OCPP, everything has to do with training, support, very personalized. And for us, that's very important. And even if the project ended, we've still got very close relationships with the university. The challenges, what I could tell you, everything that we mentioned earlier when it comes to integrated strategies, very important. So we're going to have the opportunity to create a patient partner office. So I've got to tell you that one of the first things that I looked at when I began this initiative, when I looked at the uh, hierarchy of the two organizations, I said, where is a partnership? This is a very clear message that was sent from the ministry. And we are very proud of this because, yes, people throughout they have certain responsibilities, but we need some means to succeed. A testimonial from a patient who uh, assisted in the workshop, and this is where she talked about the how she personally benefited from this workshop.